camera is weird. I have been using Cliff Studio Paint for many years, not centuries yet. And I'm glad a lot of artists and some of my friends are getting into Cliff Studio Paint as well because I enjoy creating artwork using that program as well. Cliff Studio Paint is actually a pretty great program that is a combination of Photoshop and Illustrator. Well, those two programs are actually far more superior than Clip Steel Paint. And it is also a great tool for manga artists, just like how their ads advertisement says. So today I'm finally doing something interesting, which is sharing my knowledge on Clip Steel Paint. Now before we start, I just wanted to list out some things that why I really like Clip Steel Paint, then I'm sure you guys could agree as well probably heard this a lot, but Cliff Steel Paint is a one-time purchase. Unlike other Adobe products like Photoshop and Illustrator, they are subscription-based that you need to pay every month. Can't you imagine owning every Adobe software and you have to keep track of when the subscription is over and you have to get ready to pay again for the program? It's like another set of rent that you have to worry about. But Cliff Steel Paint is expensive but worth it. And like I said, it's a big program. If you think you already know how to use it, oh boy, you're just standing on the tip of the iceberg right now because deep down, there's a lot of knowledge that you need to know and I need to know. Second of all, it is pretty user-friendly. You can move around windows to make them clip on your desktop, making your own workspace that you're happy with. I make three workspaces for mainly illustration and animation and there's a lot of free brushes that you can download from in the official Clip Studio Paint website. Yes, they are free! Of course, there are some that you need to pay, but most of them are free. I cannot speak English well today. <laughs> Alright, without further ado, let me show you some things that I discovered while I was working on Clip Studio Paint for in these past few years. By the way, I'm still using an old version because I just don't feel like updating it. I, I think that the old version versus the new version interface, I like the old version better, but if I ever make up my mind, I might update it. So let's start off with vector layers. It's basically like size line art layer. They're very useful when you're doing line art like this. So instead of wasting time zooming in to erase carefully, why not just create a vector layer, draw your line art, using a vector eraser, and just drag on wherever you want to erase. Simple. Coming up, this is a problem everyone endured. So many layers. And if you're like me, too lazy to name your layers, you will search through every layer pressing the I button to see which layer is the one you wanted. Well, I got a trick for you. Just simply press O on your keyboard as a shortcut and press select layer. And then just simply click on the space you wanted to know where that layer is. This can be easier if you simply click on the picture of the layers, thumbnail display settings, and show only layer area. That way, it will only show what you did to that certain layer. These both ways can be effective when you have problems like a random spot on the cheek and you can't find the layer. But pressing O is the easiest way, because sometimes you can't find a random spot even if the layer is showing what you did. Next off. Don't you hate that Clip Studio Paint always opens a new canvas when you drag your reference into the window? Well, this can be solved easily if you just drag your reference picture into the layers section until this red line shows up, release, rasterize it, and there, no new canvas made for the reference picture. Be mindful that once you rasterize it, it could crop up some parts to match your original canvas size. There's also actually a sub view which is basically built for references, but I don't like it that much since it only shows one picture at a time. But it is pretty useful if you want to have, a, have your own color palette. I found this trick from one of the artists in YouTube. I don't know why I can't find their video anymore, but if that's you watching it right now, let me know. So this trick is how to not color outside of your line work layer. To do this, simply go to the settings of the tool property of your brush and then enter overflow and select do not exceed line of reference layer. Now that you've done that, you have to make your line art layer a reference layer by clicking this what looks like a lighthouse. So now when you color it, 
it will stop the color from overflowing out of the line art. But I personally don't like this because me with lots of lines as a detail in the line art, sometimes it just won't color the small spaces I want to. So, yeah, this trick is not really for everyone. Don't like the size of your lines in your line art? Don't worry, just simply press Y on your keyboard and it will bring you to the correct line. This only works well if you're drawing on a vector layer though. Press Y on your keyboard, correct line width, and you can choose to thicken or thinner the width of your line art. Or if you don't want to go through all that crap, just press fixed width and it will do it for you very, very quickly. Something sticking out in Vector Eraser doesn't seem to do the trick, not to worry. Just go to control point or press O which kinda does the same thing and pinch that area out. Have I mentioned that you don't have to always press Y or O as a shortcut to correct your vector lines when the layer property has already done the shortcut for you? Pretty awesome, is it? There is also an option to convert the layer from vector to raster or raster to vector. But the result isn't always good, so don't do that if you want to convert raster to vector. If your pen is like mine, that doesn't have an option to pan the canvas, or you're forced to use a mouse to work on designing at school, instead of pressing H for the hand tool all the time, just hold on space and navigate the area. It works for both Photoshop and Illustrator as well. Shortcuts are really helpful. If you want to know what helpful shortcut keys I bind with, here's a list for you. Some of them are actually default shortcuts that I found out when I was messing around. That's all the time that I have for showing you these tips and tricks on Cliff Steel Paint. I found some other stuff as well, but I think you can pretty much discover it on your own using your own eyes. Since we're all bored in quarantine, might as well just experience it and play around with Cliff Steel Paint because you're stuck at home anyway, so why not just, uh, instead of always just playing games like me, I, I just like uh, experimenting the programs, the new programs that I have and just play around with it and see oh, some new discoveries and maybe you can share them in Twitter and Instagram. I found this page called Clip Studio Paint Artist. It shows you some more Clip Studio tips and tricks. My Clip Studio Paint version is a pretty old version, so I'm pretty sure there's more new stuff to discover in, your, in the newer version of Clip Studio Paint. So I'm just shouting out to that artist who made that Twitter page because they have more tips than I do especially with the newest version. I hope this is informative and helpful to all of you who are considering to get Studio Clip Studio Paint or you're already using it and you felt like you're still on the tip of the surface and just want to duck down deep more for knowledge on this program. For those who are considering to get Clip Studio Paint, just do it. It's definitely worth your money. Okay, bye!
the other reason that I wanted to make this video is I just want to try out my new camera and external mic. It's great. 